we're Chris and Teresa, and we would love to guide you on your fiber arts journey. We own a successful fiber processing mill and online needle felting business, experienced at raising all fiber animals, and have renovated a hundred year old school into a fiber arts retreat center. Processing, needle felting, yarn, roving, fiber animals, and sustainable agriculture are all topics discussed here. Think of this as your one stop shop for advice, information, tips, and getting your questions answered on all things from farm to needle. So pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be inspired while you learn. This is YouTube. Welcome to YouTube 217. Can I introduce this first little bit of... This little segment? Yes. Okay, we... Every time I use this amazing broom and broom pan down in the mill, I think we have got to share this with the world because it is, it's amazing. Anyone who has swept and then turned it up and took everything off, whether it's leaves, whether it's fiber, what have you, this, I'm assuming it's playing right now, is the one. Cats meow. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah it's it's pretty amazing so menards that's where we got it menards yeah it's amazing mm -hmm. so if you have a mill with wool or you have just wool your fiber or leaves or what have you it's amazing or a lot of dog fur like i do in my house last what you know it was like three weeks ago we got two weeks finally, ago finally got the award that we've been waiting for. We <laughs> we received this award last fall, November. Was it last fall? <laughs> yeah, Bob Vila. He presented it. Virtually to presented it to us. And we didn't get the physical award until mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. And we finally got it. And it was amazing. It's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. now in, like on the first floor of the Gnome School House. All mm -hmm. lit up for everybody mm -hmm. to see and we're very proud of it for always mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's pretty cool yep yes okay now we uh, this is kind of i don't know how you bittersweet but yet but yet cool um we have kurt and leanne who have been very supportive. Very supportive from the get-go. They live just kitty corner from the school. And I know Leanne would, every now and then, she'd say, when we were, like, cleaning just up. and when, yeah, yeah. She'd say, I heard you laughing on my ring. <laughs> she, You know, one of those ring cameras. <laughs> She's just an absolute sweetheart. and Very supportive. Very... Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, just been very amazing. involved from the beginning, mm -hmm. and we very much appreciate her. Mm -hmm. And just recently found out that her husband is, mm -hmm. has a terminal cancer. Mm -hmm. He's been given, what was it, two months, two to three months. Yeah. And so we were wondering, what can we do for Leanne? Mm -hmm. She's done so much for us, and mm -hmm. um, we came up with a benefit. Mm -hmm. And... We have just been very, very blessed by this benefit. Oh my goodness, with yes. how many people are willing to help mm -hmm. and want to contribute. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that just goes to say, I mean, Kurt is oh, an absolute sweetheart, kind, gentle soul, and has, has been in business in Enderlin for... As a plumber. As a plumber for years. His family, you know, is... Oh... I don't know how many years, 37 years. Oh. It's just, oh. But we've been very, very blessed mm. by the people reaching out to us after mm -hmm. we decided to ha you know, host this benefit mm -hmm. here. How many people have reached out to us and the donations are having a silent auction, mm -hmm. uh, all of the, and it's all happening on October 22nd. Mm -hmm. From four to seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have a baked potato bar with chili and Mary Ellawelli and Helen Carpenter went and dug. And Dwayne Wadeson. And Dwayne Wadeson, yes. yes. Dwayne Wadeson and Kurt Schall have been friends since high school. It's, it's pretty amazing. 
throughout all of this. And anywho, they dug 390 potatoes for this event. So pretty yes. exciting. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be part of the potato mm -hmm. bar uh, and yep. the benefit here mm -hmm. on the 22nd. So, and we continually get uh, donations for the silent auction. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's been a, a blessing absolutely for us to witness all of these donations coming in mm -hmm. and we're just really really happy to be a part of the, mm -hmm. the community and helping yes and, and trying to help them out in this tiny little way <laughs> yes that we can i know exactly. that there's nothing uh we've been praying um mm -hmm. for them and and we will continue this is just a little, it's all we can do and yeah something yeah. we can do but we're we're really proud of the community that is coming mm -hmm. together for absolutely them. yes absolutely if, and if you have if you're in the community and you want to donate we are accepting um donations for, for the silent this, auction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as well as cash donations you, you know to give directly to to currently and yeah absolutely yes mm -hmm. yeah and hga spinning and weaving week so the Hand Weavers Guild of America asked mm -hmm. us if we would do a tour of our studio, mm -hmm. which is the entire school, <laughs> uh, for their Spinning and Weaving Week. Uh, mm -hmm. We did that virtually yesterday, and um, you can go to the Hand Weavers Guild of America and watch that. But we were very honored to be able to give a tour mm -hmm. of the school. Uh, there was many questions, mm -hmm. and it was just it was um, pretty cool. An honor for us to yeah, be and able if, to if share you, our space. Yeah, if you happen to have saw us, we would love if you would comment. If you're give a us a shout out. Watcher, if you're a yeah. new subscriber to YouTube, that would be awesome. Yes, let us know if you saw us. So that, yeah, super cool. Yeah, super, so super cool. This last weekend was my son's wedding here at the Gnome School House, which is something that we had, both Chris and I, uh, he's been dating... Tori for six years uh, before we started this mm -hmm. uh, and we were we uh, right away they we were would hopeful be to be like the first, first. wedding <laughs> they were a little young and so yeah. it finally took place this Sunday and uh, it was amazing the perfect weather they it got was married perfect. in front of the school mm -hmm. and I think we shared Last week, a couple weeks ago, the the bell that was donated to the school from the church that burned down here. Zion Lutheran. Mm -hmm. Steve worked very hard to make sure that that was in place for their wedding, which I very much appreciate. I don't know. I came up with this idea that it should ring when they were pronounced husband and wife. I don't know. I didn't ask them, I guess, <laughs> what they thought. But it, it would mean a lot to me because I remember... Uh, growing up in a small country church, the bell ringing for special occasions like that. Mm -hmm. And so when they were pronounced husband and wife, it rang. Yes. The ushers rang it. It was, that. that was, it gave me goosebumps, honestly. Yeah. It, it was, was pretty amazing. cool. And I, you know, I hope it's the first of a tradition of here. Many, yeah. Of many. Yes. Yeah. 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 So the, the wedding was beautiful. Uh, there was a nice breeze. It was really, really, really warm for October 1st. It set uh, a record. It did. And, and Fargo was 96. Yikes. Yeah, it was warm. Mm -hmm. In the afternoon on the west side of the school. But, mm -hmm. but the, we had the, the breeze, beautiful the wind. wind beautiful wind. Uh, was blowing perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, everything went quite seamless. I mean, it was, it was, it was just beautiful. Perfect. perfect. I can hardly wait. And um, Tori had her horses there, her two mm -hmm. um, Palominos. Buttercup and Aspen. Yes. With Buttercup has been with her like for years and years and years. She showed her in 4-H. Oh, did. really? Uh, yes. She's been. Is that who she was on then? I bet. Yes. Buttercup yeah. is her. And then Aspen she got later. Uh, that's where they like many of their pictures of um, we did like homeschool proms and things they did and the horses were involved. So it's always been her dream that the horses would be a part of her wedding. So they were in this little pen, like right during the ceremony, right mm -hmm. off, out, like right off the sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. And uh, many pictures were taken with the horses. And I'm hoping I can share them if uh, hopefully they're done 
yeah. by the time I edit this. So that would uh, be amazing because I can hardly wait to see them. She said that she was going to get some today, but I haven't mm. seen any yet. But hopefully, if not this time, I will share next time some of the pictures from their wedding, which mm. should be very, very beautiful. It was beautiful. Her dress was beautiful. She's beautiful. The family pictures are, look like, I mean, just everything. Everything turned out. Everything was perfect. Yeah. And then she just, we didn't really have a dance, but they were going to do their first dance, the uh, uh, father-daughter dance mm -hmm. and mother-son dance. Mm -hmm. And that was all they were really planning on doing. And she said, can we do that in front of the barn behind the school? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. And I took, so we have lights, which you know, you've know you probably seen falling on us <laughs> <laughs> during one episode of YouTube. But we have these lights and I said, I can go get them and I can, mm -hmm you know get them out there and that was quite perfect it was all perfect so mm -hmm. i might share a few of them at the end if not now and so you and lane videos. danced and tori and her dad danced and then their first their first mm -hmm. dance as a married couple mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was an, it was a beautiful day mm -hmm. a very beautiful day mm -hmm. everything went perfectly yeah mm -hmm. amazing amazing mm -hmm. oh and so then much fun the week leading up to this big weekend <laughs> here at the gnome schoolhouse uh jeff and i weaned the lambs so all those little baby lambs that we brought into the world and um helped to keep alive were weaned from their mothers this week i don't remember what day it was but uh yeah. we weaned them all uh they're all doing good we did we really have to watch them carefully after they're weaned because they're stressed and Oh. That's when we're worried about the salmonella popping up again. Uh, we had two that they're, when their ears start hanging down, that means that things aren't right with them. And so we treated the, the day of the wedding, <laughs> that morning, uh, we treated a couple because we... Uh, Lambs? Yeah, because we were worried about worm, worms. And so we worm, dewormed them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and are keeping a very close eye on them. And then we, all of the bottle, the bucket babies, as we call them, how uh, we brought them, and they're all now mixed Oh, they're together. Babies. Yeah. Oh, fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and usually it's kind of chaos where they're all, you know, bellering, you know, bellering. That's cows. They just, bah. But, yeah, so that was happening. So we... We would we normally wean sooner, but we've been really working on their pens, and so Jeff just finally got them done. And so did you see? Did did you hear less buying then since it's later? Probably because yeah, moms probably have self weaned a little yeah, bit. Some of them I think have self weaned. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, we heard a lot of of the moms mm -hmm. crying for their babies and things. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I have spent most of my time here, mm -hmm. so I haven't seen a lot of that. I usually try and walk through them in the morning before I come here. Mm -hmm. I just because they're under so much stress, yeah. and like to make sure that everything's going okay. Mm -hmm. All you know, we haven't lost any. Good. Last year it was a different story. We lost. Did you? That's when. When you weaned. Yeah. So we were trying to give the moms a break last year when they mm. had the salmonella. That's when Jeff. Uh, came home from work and he came home and there were seven dead lambs. No way! Mm -hmm. Oh, and he just sat down on the bale and said, "What in the world are we gonna do?" And that's yeah. when he called the vet who's retired, said, yeah. and uh, he came out and uh, posted them and said that they don't have any worms, which is what our main concern was mm -hmm. last year. Um, that's what we were you know, told might be the problem, and then he said, no, they have an uh, infection. They have salmonella. You need, you need to treat them with antibiotics, and so he did, which saved a lot of them. But, yeah, a lot mm. of them were sick. Mm. Many more died. Many died on the way, while the vet was on his way. Mm. So that's why we're very concerned and... Extra we, diligent with this. Right, and we meaning. had... No choice but to do it right before a wedding, <laughs> but everything turned out good. really good. Good. Yeah. So and you know, so far I haven't been home to you know check today, but yeah, 
I think it everything will is all be good. <laughs> yes. Going good. Also, and then also the day before uh, Lane and Tori's wedding, uh, we had an event here at the school, which mm -hmm. was called uh, Wild. And it was put on by the Farmers Union mm -hmm. and it was Women in Leadership Development. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of enjoying listening to the speakers, uh, yes. partaking in it. Absolutely. Uh, excellent speakers. Mm hmm and uh, an amazing group of women that that joined mm -hmm. together that day. They had uh, we had vendors in the gym. Yeah, we enjoyed the speakers and the entire event here at the Gnome School Schoolhouse. So Chris has these shoes. <laughs> Thanks to Leanne, Kurt and Leanne. <laughs> to Leanne, I went over and visited with them prior to them heading down to Mayo, and I'm like, "What is on your feet?" And she told me about these bubble shoes. She goes, just go on Amazon and buy these bubble shoes. She said, you'll love them. And so I did. And $8 later, <laughs> I had a pair of bubble shoes. And I do. I really honestly like them. I don't like them for walking, mm -hmm. you know, but they, they work really good for standing down in the mill. And I mean, they're plastic Bubble shoes is really what they are. Because up to this point, you've been wearing. Yeah, I've I've tried all sorts of different types of because tennis you have. shoes. I have plantar fasciitis, and yes, and what works best is is the UGG or not UGGs? Excuse me, Crocs, where I put in our insoles. They work best, but sometimes my feet get hot down in the mill. Um, because it's, it's, warm down there. it's warm down there. And so these bubble shoes have holes in them. And then these, these, these little molded little pillow sacks of air kind of just support your feet. Yes. Just, I have very expensive shoes that I use when I go walking and things like that. But for standing down in the mill, these I can just hose off when, you know, they don't, the, the fiber doesn't stick to them because they're plastic. Why don't I get email reminders anymore? Because I've been busy. Because she had a son getting married and she didn't. So if I don't have time to write the blog post, I don't send out the email. Yep. Because so it would there. just be an email with YouTube in it. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be more. A little more. Mm-hmm. And I hopefully will be able to get ahead of being busy. No. And now. Moving just, forward. Just doing it. Yeah, that. get that done ahead of time. Yeah. I'm hoping. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you put Dakota Souls on the wholesale list? Okay. This Dakota Souls are our wool insoles that we do here. Um, on site and we have Dakota Souls Plus which has the proprietary blend of activated charcoal cornstarch and baking soda that are felted into the middle of them and then the regular Dakota Souls that are wool and stamped out here and yes they are on the wholesale list right now. Yeah. Yes. Where do you find this wholesale so list? So if you go to bearcreekfelting.com and you scroll all the way to the bottom you'll see where you can purchase wholesale. Perfect. And the insoles are on there. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. So our last week's question and answer. The question was, when is the Oryx Safari? And when is it? It is next year, September. Oh, it starts in August, August 30th, mm -hmm. I think, to September 6th. Mm -hmm. And it's a week long. Yes. At Julie. Schmelzer, 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 5086. You are the winner. Congratulations. Just contact us on bearcreekfelting.com. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us your shirt size and give us your address and we'll send out your prize. Yes, and Julie, you had it down to the date and right. yeah, well done. Well done, Julie. Which means you should attend. So we hope to see you next <laughs> August. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, this is our next week's question is, da, da, da. if you have visited the Gnome Schoolhouse mm -hmm. and eaten something here, yep. what was your favorite meal? What, can you describe 
your meal here at the Gnome School House and why you liked it. Because mm -hmm. uh, the, the better yes. the description, the higher the, the points. higher your chances of winning are. <laughs> yeah, because we've had so many folks that go, oh, I can't, I can't even believe that meal I just ate. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that is, I mean, something we're very proud of here mm -hmm. at the Home School House. So mm -hmm. we would like to hear your opinions here. And upcoming mm -hmm. classes we have here at the Gnome School House. Uh, many. We do have many. I have been in the process of adding more for 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, I just added a fun one. What? Uh, Jean Hanlon's February retreat. And then in July... We have a Navajo weaving really five day retreat, which <gasps> there's, I'm going to do it. You're doing it. I want to do it. You're not teaching it. No, no I'm not teaching. It. Yeah. I like, need to learn it. I want, I'm excited to partake in this class in July. That is interesting because I did, <laughs> I did like 60 pounds, 40 year old wool for a couple that reside in New Mexico so that they could Navajo weave with it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've never done Navajo weaving. And so... She, this, Interesting. This looks like everything that I would love. Hmm. And she describes it as um, everything. While you're weaving, you're going to put in all of... Every, every thought that you've had visiting with your new friends that you're... Mm -hmm. You're enjoying this with, and that was the feeling I had from our safari. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I look at the giraffes that I made, mm. the giraffe, I am reminded of this amazing time that I had with these people. And that's, that's how she cool. describes how this Navajo weaving is going to be. So is this the first outside teacher that has done more than like a two or three day with her five day? I think so. Yeah. So we have many upcoming classes here at the Gnome Schoolhouse. Uh, I am busy. We're actually implementing a new... What is she uh, doing? Leather. Oh. Leather work. Okay. Louis has many, many hobbies. Yes, she does. And I think she's making the print in the leather right now. Mm, we can hear gotcha. pounding. We hear pounding. She does a lot of fun things up there. Yes. So we have many classes coming up. We have Inkle Loom Weaving October 13th, which is full. Uh, we have Dyeing Fiber, which is October 13th in the afternoon, which there is still spots and with amazing teachers. Mm -hmm. You want to miss this. So, and this is our first, these are our core class weekends uh, that we just started. Uh, it was Julie and Jeannie's uh, fun idea. And uh, you can come for the weekend or you can just take a class here and there. And Dying Fiber is one of them. And I think it will be amazing because they are amazing teachers. So, and then Spinning on a Spinning Wheel is October 14th. Uh, Julie is who taught me how to spin. She's amazing. Uh, that's full, isn't it? That one's full. Yes. Mm -hmm. And 3D wet felting, which is you're making kind of a vessel. It's beautiful. A vase. A vase. Yeah. It's amazing. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the following week, October 20th, 21st, 22nd, we have a bunch of painting. So you can come for the weekend. You can take one class. You can take more than one class. Uh, they are filling up very, very fast. So I would uh, suggest there are a bunch of fall. There's one with a highland cow. There's a landscaping retreat. Um, it's a fall landscape. And then there's a bunch of pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And then October 27th through the 29th is Whoa. Jean Hanlon's fall into felting retreat, which she makes adorable. It's not even nice for you to say that. It is, but because <laughs> just next next fall, you're gonna want to be ahead next of spring. everybody else. So in February, I just listed it. 
she's doing a class in February, and mm. it is. Um, I can't remember the, what she calls it, but it is trees. It is the... We have the samples in the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll just, share them next week. I just listed it. And so you're going to want to check that out because that mm -hmm. will fill up fast. She's an amazing teacher. Everybody mm -hmm. last year had an amazing time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, basket weaving class on October 28th is full. We do not have any scheduled but she will be scheduling some upcoming classes. So mm -hmm. any, any basket weaving class with Marcy Blickery, you just, just got to grab it right away. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's a Taste of Fiber retreat with Julie and Jeannie, their sisters, amazing teachers. And um, those are filling up fast. That's November 2nd through the 4th. And I have been busy adding uh, classes to um, for 2024 and this year we've added an extra safari just because there was so much um, interest in making an elephant and that will happen uh, in the spring and you can find that at gnomeschoolhouse.com uh, we'll also have the, the regular one that we do in the fall which is uh, August through um, the beginning of September and that will we will be making Oryx and then we will be adding many more classes uh, between Chris and I uh, our own classes as well as other teachers classes thank you God bless you all for joining us once again <laughs>